So are you looking to be inspired today? All right, I want to talk to you today from the thought. Very simple thought again. God's masterpiece. God's masterpiece. We talked a little bit last week, and we said he knows who he is. And today I want to give, uh, we didn't cover everything last week because it's so much. <clears throat> then time permits, we'll go back to it and give you little pieces at a time. But coming from he knows who he is, I want to share with you, how can I put this, who you are. In the past, I've mentioned to you my experience of being in Walmart and going into the section where puzzles are shelved. And I shared with you my experience of observing the picture on the box as I stood in the aisle. I shared with you my experience of picking the box up, shaking it, and listening to the pieces in the box as they moved around and made noise. This is a puzzle box. 100 plus pieces in this box. There is an image on the front of this box. The noise the pieces in the box makes is synonymous to the noise that people make when they're out of position. The picture I saw on the box is what would become a reality after the pieces in the box are put together. Just so you know, the pieces won't come together on their own. These pieces won't come together on their own. Someone has to put them together. Someone has to place them where they're supposed to be. Someone had to design each piece. You follow me? Here's the news flash. Each piece in the box, each piece in the box is a masterpiece, a masterpiece. When those pieces come together and become the image we see on the box, it becomes the masterpiece. Ladies and gentlemen, you are God's masterpiece. You are a piece of the puzzle of life that God has designed for the world to see the image of Christ and how the body of Christ should function on the earth. Each one of you are a masterpiece. Someone poses the question to you, uh, 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 who are you? I'm a masterpiece. I'm a piece of the puzzle in God's box, a piece, a piece, a piece. You're not all, but you're a piece. But when we come together in our proper place, what we hear now in life, in this world, all the crime and everything that's going on, people are out of position. The pieces aren't where they're supposed to be. See, the thing about a puzzle is that I can place these pieces, they'll stay right there. They won't move. The problem with us is God can place us, we think we look good over here. God placed us over here, we want to move over there. God tell us to do this, we think we should be doing that. That's when you're out of position. You're still a masterpiece, but you cannot function properly. <laughs> oh, boy, 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 boy. I want you to know that God has placed you on this earth at this time, and he desires for you and I to enter into a relationship, to remain in fellowship with him, you see, so that we can become the masterpiece, so we can become the masterpiece that's laid out in the 66 books of that's laid out in his word. 
God has a plan for you and I. He designed you to fit, just like the pieces in the puzzle, different shapes and sizes, and they fit right. You could force a piece and bend up the edges and everything. It still won't be right, even though it might look right. There are gaps in it. But when you are placed right where you're supposed to be, there are no gaps anywhere. And when you're there, you can perform the way God desires and created and ordained you to perform. Let's look at the Word of God here. And we lifted this thought up from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Well, the Word of God says, for we are His workmanship. And the word there really is masterpiece. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, divinely prescribed acts, see, that benefit others that bring glory to God. You as a masterpiece, you're supposed to bring glory to God. God has placed everything that he needs in you to fit where we are supposed to be. So ask yourself this question. Am I in my right place? Am I trying to place me or uh, have I allowed God to place me? That's something to think about. Yes. He says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before, see, beforehand that we should walk in them. Some of you may be asking, Tony, how can this be? How can this be? Well, our friend Nicodemus asked Jesus the same question. How can this be? Here's how it can be. Look at where God, according to Paul in Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1. Look at where God found us. And you, you can put your name there, he made alive who were dead. We were dead, ladies and gentlemen. See, we were dead in the graveyard of trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Now, Paul is talking to the Ephesians in their current state now as brethren, but he wants them to understand where they were. All right? And you made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin in which you walked according to the course of this world. This refers to the world order here. It refers to humanity's values, humanity's standards. That's how you and I used to function according to the world's ideologies, how they thought, their thoughts, their ideas, their imaginations. But God did not create you to remain that way in which you once walked, conducted yourself according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now notice he's talking about Satan. He's a prince. He's not the king of anything. He's the prince of the power of the air. See, he says, who now? right now, works in the sons of disobedience. He can't work in the sons of obedience, but he can work in the sons of disobedience because they gave themselves over. When you and I, before we came into Christ, we gave ourselves over to play Satan's games. We gave, Satan cannot make you do anything. You choose to do the bad that you do, all right? It's not give him credit for what he can't do. Right? Verse 3 says, Among whom also he's including himself. We all conducted ourselves. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. All of us were. He said, In the sons of the among whom we all once conducted ourselves, and how? In the lust of the flesh. See, the forbidden desires, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We had to think it first. We had to think it first, all right? And desire, we're talking about those passions, those forbidden passions, you see? Desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature, the sin nature, were by nature children of wrath, you see? Just 
as others. The wrath of God was against us when you were out there. Look at what he says. Two words that change everything. But God. But God. If it wasn't for the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, we'd be out of here. We'd be messed up. Believers now, you can sit back and look at what's going on in the world right now, and you can see this from individuals who are still in verses 1, 2, and 3. But verse 4, they decided not to pay any attention to. But God, who is rich in mercy because of what? His great love. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved you, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved who? You. Put your name there. Even when, even when you was drinking alcohol, smoking the blunt, selling the drugs, sleeping around, God still so loved you. Ain't that good news? He won't turn his back on you. There's nothing you and I could do to cause God to hate us, to not want to do for us. You can't mess up so bad that God doesn't want you. You the apple of his eye. The question is, will you choose to look and direct yourself, accept his son as Jesus Christ, and come through that door? That's the question right there. You're God's masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen. You're God's masterpiece. Even when you were dead in trespasses and sin, look what he did. He made us alive together. This puzzle. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. By the unmerited favor of God, something you can't earn, something you can't pay back, and something I sure didn't deserve. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. By grace you have been saved and raised up together. He made you alive, us. Then he raised us up and made us sit together. He exalted us, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is who you are, God's masterpiece. Do you know who you are? Man, this should do something for you. This should call you to shift your thinking when it comes to you because God so loved you. He didn't care what you did, how bad you were, what you said, who you cussed out. He says, I'm sending my son to the cross for you. Good God Almighty. Man will say what he'll do for you, but hey, you know how that go. But God will. I did. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He said, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards, put your name there, towards us, towards us in Christ Jesus. Notice that all of this is being done in Christ Jesus. See, he loved the Son so much, so much. He loved the Son so much that all that he given to the Son, you and I, that the Son would lose none of it. So if he loved the Son and you in the Son, how much does he love you? Man, this is, this is, this word of God is something else. I'm telling you, man, this, boy, it's out of here. It's, it's really, a, it's beyond amazing. That in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches and his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved. You didn't do nothing. See, the law couldn't save you. The law can only make you aware that you uh, was messing up. The law, you're speeding. You get stopped, you get a ticket. There's no redeeming factor there. See, the law finds you guilty, right? But Christ Jesus, see, you got victory in him. 
Lord, have mercy, Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things come through faith and that not of yourselves. Tony, you didn't do nothing to get you to where you are. I did all of this because I loved you. I didn't care how messy you was, the thoughts that went across your mind. I know about all the killings and murders you thought about because I thought about them. I'm for real with me. I know what God did for me because I know what was in my mind. And I know what haunts me at times. Yes, there's a monster under my bed, but there's a Christ in my heart. Good God Almighty, can you be straight up with yourself? Can you talk to you about you? Are you afraid to talk to you about you? Good God Almighty, man. Lord have mercy, Jesus. This, I'm telling you, man, this is, this is out of this world. He says, it is the gift of God. God loved us so much. He gave us salvation as a gift. He salvaged you and I from the garbage heap of life. He didn't take out the trash. He went to get it. To bring the trash in the house. Clean it up. Place it where it's supposed to be. Stand back and say, you look marvelous. God is good, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Look at what he says here. He says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, we ain't got nothing to boast about. I don't care how much education I have. I don't care how much education you have. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care where you work. I don't care what you've done. None of that got you in the kingdom. Paul said he counted all his doom, garbage, manure. It's nothing. He give all that up for Christ. Because he so loved him. This is why he was so eager to go everywhere, to preach the word, to proclaim the word of God, because he knew who he was, but was excited about who he was becoming. Every day, you're becoming more than you were the day before. Every day, there's a hope out there, better for you. You might have messed up Monday, but Tuesday coming, you can be better Tuesday. You might mess up Tuesday, but Wednesday coming. God gave you Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, seven days to get it together. And if he woke you up this morning and you inhaled and exhaled, you ought to say, boy, Lord, I thank you for another chance to get it together. <laughs> look, at, look at what he says. He says, for we are his workmanship, his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works. You want to know who you are? You want to know why you're here? It tells you right here. It lets you know. For what are you supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be doing good works. See, what are good works? Divinely prescribed acts, okay? What did God tell you to do? Not what Susie told you to do. See, what, where did God send you today? What did he ask you to do? What good works? You see, people do good things. He didn't say good things here. He said good works here. There's a difference. See, you can be in the world and do a whole lot of good things because that's what you wanted to do. Good works is what God wants you to do. He placed Adam in the garden to work to tend it, to keep it, so that in the garden, Adam doing his work, the word work means to become all that I've created you to be. To become that. There is some work that you're supposed to be doing with what he's placed in you to fulfill, you see, the will of God for your life that you can enjoy life on this side. Good works. All you have to do is accept God. What good works do you want me to do today, Father? I'm available. I'm ready to go to work. I ain't tired and I don't even need a lunch break, God. You already done paid me in full. You gave me the Holy Spirit, so I'm good. 
You told me to seek the kingdom and all these things will be added to me. So when I seek the kingdom, it's going to be added to me because I'm in the kingdom. It's already mine. I don't have to toil for this. It's in the kingdom. Most of us are trying to find it in the world. But it's in the kingdom. For by grace, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. God prepared the good works. Like his salvation, like God's salvation, our sanctification and good works Ladies and gentlemen, they were ordained by God. They were ordered by God. And each one of us has some work to do. Each one of us. So you wake up and you tell me, oh man, I ain't got nothing to do today. That's not true. Yeah, you, you need to check with the one in charge, who's really in charge, and ask him, what am I supposed to be doing? You are a masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen. You are a masterpiece. All this shaking around. It's because in all this noise you hear going through life, people aren't where they're supposed to be. But the very moment you get to where you're supposed to be, the pieces in the box, God will put them together that we will represent the image in his word. We will become this. In God's mind, it already exists. That's why Jesus sat down, because he finished. The Holy Spirit came to indwell each one of us so we will get right where we're supposed to be. We get right where we're supposed to be because we're in tune with him. We know exactly when the world looks at us, the church, when they look at us, they know that he's coming back again because they see him in us. They will say to themselves, I want some of that. What's the reason for the hope that's in you all? You know, can, can, can you share that with me? That's the good work, ladies and gentlemen. That's the good work for you and I. So as you go about this week, Know that you are a masterpiece. I don't care what happens, what trouble comes your way. I don't care what someone says about you. They didn't create you. God did. And he put everything in you to become all that you're supposed to be to do his work on this earth. He did that for you. He did that for you. So be your best every day and think the best about you. You think the best about you. That's where it starts, with how you think about you. Forget what other people say or think about you. If it doesn't align with the will of God, it's a lie. 